Another one of our quality classic live streams. Uh, today we are going to be in a lovely place. This is Malawi. This is in southeastern Africa. Not to be confused with South Africa, which is a little bit to the south of us. Uh, this is an absolutely gorgeous country. And for this flight tonight, we're going to be flying in the PC-6, which, I don't know, it's something about the tiger scheme, even though there are no native tigers to this particular country. Hey, that's just something about the... I don't know, I'm just working with a kind of thing like that. For those of you who'd like to join us this evening, uh, we're currently located at Foxtrot, Quebec, Lima, Charlie. Uh, it's uh, going to be a local airport today. I'm actually popping real quickly here. You can see everything's all kind of queued up and ready to rock here. So again, uh, we're over here at Foxtrot, Quebec, Lima, Charlie. That will be the airport that we're going to get started at. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be flying across the country, and our destination is going to be Foxtrot Whiskey Kilo, India. It's a little bit to the west. We get to cross one of these really, really, really large lakes, which uh, from some of the photographs I've been looking through recently, it looks pretty neat. Uh, like I said, a very, very, very pretty country. Now, if you're wondering uh, why I've chosen this time of day, is because uh, one of the most incredible sights you can see, of course, is an African sunrise. I mean, sunrise is uh, beautiful no matter where you go throughout the world. But in this particular country, it just like, it lights up everything with this like gold haze, and it's just absolutely incredible to watch. So again, feel free to join in. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you have all players set. And uh, for those of you who are uh, on the wrong server, double check to make sure in the East USA server here. This is the easiest one for me because obviously I live in the East USA, so it makes it a little bit simpler. So without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get going here. So I'm going to look around and we'll get this thing uh, kind of making its way here. Now the PC-6 is such an interesting aircraft in my mind. Uh, my exposure to this aircraft in the real world, of course, is uh, sitting in the back of it, uh, strapped to somebody else uh, as we're getting ready to do some parachuting. Uh, skydiving was an absolutely incredible experience for me. It was one of those things where it's one of those like lifelong dreams. You just can't tell mom that you're about to do it kind of a thing like that. So of course, I went skydiving without letting her know and we basically just took the certificate that says congratulations you survived and we stuck it up in the fridge and then we went out to eat so like she could like find it on her own without um you have to worry about the immediate consequences uh, therein so that was my first introduction to this particular plane like i said sitting in the back honestly the plane was so bouncy and rickety i was ready to get out long before we actually got to the point where we had to get out of the plane and go ahead and you know jump and enjoy the fall kind of a thing like that all right, I'm going to go ahead and check for traffic. Traffic looks pretty good. I'm going to go uh, do a classic midfield takeoff here. I don't need anything more sophisticated than that. you got to love the control stick on this thing. It's just like, <laughs> looks like it came off an old P-51 or something like that. Love it. All righty then. That looks pretty good so far. Go ahead, sneak to the left here. Hmm, awesome. Easy on the brakes. Check out the last couple things real fast. Looks good. Let's go ahead and hit it. Got all of these short takeoff and landing planes. Apparently I need a little bit more right foot though. Ooh. Awesome. All right, let's go ahead and get underway. Look at that little tiny sun just burning through the horizon there. It's just incredible. Everything just turns like pink or orange. It's just, oh, it's amazing. All right, then we'll go ahead and turn on course. And we'll go take another look at that in a minute. <laughs> Everything turned purple. Love it. Everything just starts to glow orange. It's just the most incredible sight. Give us a few moments to let everybody get nice and caught up here. Probably not as lit up as everyone. Oh, welcome back, Gamer88. Welcome back, Gotesh. Long time no see. Couple taps to trim. And let's be on our way. See if I can get the shot from back there. There it is. That's awesome.
And, you know, m one thing Microsoft Flight Simulator does really, 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 really well is it looks incredible. It's just, you know, everything I've done, every little flight, I've been doing a lot of work recently in uh, VR actually with this, and I've been always super impressed with what I see. It makes me kind of wonder if we're going to get a Microsoft Flight Simulator 2022 or something like that, where they're going to basically add on to this one and kind of keep going with all the different styles and everything and make the graphics even more impressive, which would just be amazing. All right, let's go ahead and get ourselves on course here. There's the big old lake uh, right off for 12 o'clock. Uh, that's going to be the uh, one of our first little waypoints here. And like I said, we're going to get kind of both sides of the country. We're going to hit the east side, and then we're going to make our way kind of uh, directly towards the west where we have the capital and everything along those lines. Set myself up. Eh, this looks pretty good. I don't need to get up too high here. Like I said, we want to enjoy a little bit of the sights here. And we're going to miss out on the giraffes, but like I said, I'm just going to enjoy this while I can. SDO, welcome back. I missed you earlier. Uh, me dude, 666, uh, you gotta be careful with that thing. Looks like you're getting a little close to a stall there. And now we'll start making our way to the west. Seems like a pretty good altitude, about 6,500. It'll come down off the step. And knock a couple RPM off to make it a little bit quieter. And that's probably pretty good right there. I'm sure that's fine. And we'll get rolling. I'm there in spirits. Uh, currently on the... Oh, that's right. You're on the uh, World Update 10 beta, so you don't see anybody yet. I've been reading quite a bit about that 10 beta. It's, it seems pretty straightforward. Uh, the biggest change uh, for people who have not been following on the uh, World uh, Sim Update number 10 is that uh, what they're going to be doing is they're going to be unlocking access to all the deluxe and premium planes, enabling people with the ability to actually go into those files now and you know change like your cameras and things along those like that. How about uh, Den Boys uh, on the beta 2? Ah, gotcha. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about doing the beta. I just don't know how stable it is. So uh, one of the things I want to kind of keep an eye out for is when I do produce videos, it makes it a little bit difficult when it's a different version than everybody else has. But I'm sure if you want to go ahead and throw some comments about that in the chat, that'd be fine too. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Oh, it's much smoother on an Xbox. Oh, okay. So maybe there's some performance changes there. All right, I'm just going to kind of level myself off. Aim for our big old lake here right over 12 o'clock. Uh, let's see here. Um, let me see. Let me see. Uh, this is Lago Niaza. Like I said, this is uh, one of the big sources of the economy of this particular country. But I was uh, doing a little bit of research on this one a little bit earlier. Um, major, 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 major gold exporters. And I thought it was uh, very interesting to see some of the different pieces with this one. Definitely, again, a pretty country. I'll tweak the sun in just a minute. But what I think you'll find very interesting is on the east side of the river. Uh, the, <laughs> it's not a river. It's a little bit bigger than the Mississippi, I think. On the east side of the lake, uh, things are just a little bit flatter. On the west side, uh, things are significantly more mountainous. Give it a couple clips down. And I said 6,500. Here I am up at 7,500. That's what I get for looking down. There we go. I like this PC6 a lot. Uh, one of the things that I enjoy most about it is it's very industrial. You know, it looks like somebody basically took a bunch of different pieces from a bunch of other airplanes and said, yeah, 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 just toss it and it'll be fine. I mean, you've got this handle here to eject the window. Uh, you've got this little thing they took off a of Cirrus. Uh, this handlebar right here looks like they took it off a of Mirage. Uh, we've got this little stick right here. I think they got this thing off like an old tractor or something like that. I mean, we've got these, this little whole metal box here that's responsible for these a couple emergency items here. It definitely looks like just a piece of sheet metal, which, you know, obviously it's an airplane and everything sheet metal but just taking a look at this just looks like i don't know it's a little uh very industrial like you know something that somebody made in shop more so than somebody like oh in a professional whatever kind of a shop and then of course all these instruments you can tell they were probably added in after the fact because of the fact that everything is just slightly i don't know it feels it feels too new for like the rest of the structure of the plane but other than that it looks uh, very very interesting All right, so we get some comments here. Uh, smoother, uh, the next Xbox control, unfortunately, it's a little less it's smoother, but unfortunately, there's been a couple bugs with the multi-window function. Multi-window function would be excellent. <laughs> you like the look, awesome. Yeah, no, like I said, I think I, I love this plane. And now when you fly this one in VR too, it's a real kick because it's, it's bigger than it looks, but like, just look at the back seat. Like, you want to be the guy sitting right here kind of a thing with these uh, big bay windows. And I don't know, just, I feel like this thing would be very, very, very loud. All right, we'll bring ourselves on course. I'm actually going to go ahead and tweak the weather here, the time of day a little bit, kind of get a little bit brighter here. 
at 4 in the morning. We'll bring it up to 646. Oh, that is completely different looking. But it gives you the opportunity to kind of get a good look at the countryside here. So what I'm going to do, of course, which uh, we're not supposed to do, but I'm going to do it anyway because I can, is that when we come up on the shore of the lake here, I'm actually going to lose a lot of altitude. Just kind of skim along the water because, you know, why not? Let's see here, a little bit to the left, and it looks pretty darn good. Uh, the other version of this aircraft, for those of you who played with it in Flight Sim, is the cargo version. Um, there's no seats back here. You just kind of sit here, and it's just like a couple boxes and like and cables, and it, I don't know, the whole thing looks incredibly sketchy. And like I said, I love that in an airplane. I don't need something that's sleek and uh, more Star Trek than it is Star Wars. And I, I like an airplane that feels like it's used a little bit more so than it's, you know, this perfect, you know, showroom model of something. You know, what people think an airplane is versus what an airplane typically is. Right. I actually have no autopilot on right now. This is just to the trim, which goes to show you how good this aircraft is. This is definitely an aftermarket item. I guarantee it. I love how they just switches. It's just it's so cool. Bust this. I like the fuel on off. It's just like button. Lovely. The plane definitely wants to go to the left, though. So I'm kind of curious about that, actually. There we go. Nice. So uh, the sim news, uh, for those of you who have been uh, kind of following uh, what's going on, uh, we got the new PMDG 767, or <laughs> that would be nice, uh, 737-600, rather, uh, just came out, and apparently the other version, the 800, which is what everybody really wants, is uh, coming out a little bit later in August. Uh, I've been playing around with the 737 a little bit. It's it's neat. Like, I really, really enjoy it, but it's like, it's a lot of airplane, and like, for really short flights, it feels kind of awkward. Because you go through all the motions of setting up the FMS and the FMC and everything. And then, you know, you fly for an hour and then you undo it. So it takes like half an hour on both ends to get everything ready versus just, you know, kind of going. Like today, I flipped a couple switches, got this thing started right away. You know, there's no drama. There's no mystery. It was just go kind of a thing. Maybe Safari? Uh, Air Safari. I love that. Unfortunately, we're going to be a little bit too far to the east to see any of the animals that are in this region, at least flight simulators um, take on the region. But uh, what we will get to see is the uh, savannah itself. And on this side of things, like I said, this is a little less mountainous than the other region. I mean, it looks a little mountainous, but it's nothing compared to what we're going to see on the other side. Like I said, the lake itself, not terribly long. You can see the other side of it pretty easy. And then once we get on that side, we'll kind of make our way up into the capital city, which will be pretty relaxing. Like I said, I want to come down a little bit low over the water and make things a little dangerous for us. See everybody's doing behind us. Gamerson's 88, doing great, man. SDO, welcome. Me, dude, 666. Uh, if you want some interesting reading, about, by the way, for anybody who's curious, uh, 666, if you look at the origins of this actual number, and uh, look up the number 616 and take a look at the origins of that uh, relationship to those two numbers, it's actually a really, really interesting read for those of you who like uh, numerology kind of a thing like that. If you're wondering why I'm a little bit more raspy than usual, and you'll hear this in the next couple weeks' videos, of course, too. Uh, coming off of a cold, unfortunately. So, um, like I said, a little bit. If I get quiet, that probably means I'm coughing somewhere, but don't worry, I'll be fine. No COVID, don't worry. All right, so what I want to do here is how are we going to control this descent here? Uh, this airplane, by the way, um, I'm operating way into its yellow region, which you can do theoretically as long as it's not turbulent air. And uh, the air is not particularly turbulent. The only turbulence is uh, from my lack of uh, pushing this pedal correct. By the way, look at the pedal system. See, it's a rocker. Ah, it's so old school. I love it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down right here. We could do a little World War II kind of maneuver here. Gotta do the wing over. And this is one of those maneuvers where when you did this, you had to remember that why you were doing it, not so much uh, doing it itself, is because you can't do negative Gs in a lot of these old airplanes. So this allows you to go into a dive without being worrying about the physics of the dive. Just don't do it with passengers. Uh, they tend to get really grumpy about that. Not sure why. <laughs> love this thing one of the interesting things about this one is that it's a steerable tailwheel and you'll notice if I push the rudder in the air the tailwheel moves too just one of those things where it's like should that disconnect or something <laughs> I had to lose altitude somehow I wasn't just going to push the nose over uh, AB photos are just commenting the fact that looks cool it is very satisfying in a 1-2 two plane, especially over a cloud and you dive through the cloud. Oh, it's so, 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 so cool. Like, victory at sea. Like, you know, I used to watch the History Channel a lot as a kid. 
and you'd always see the generic shot of each plane would do their little wing over in formation with each other. It's just kind of one of those things that's like, I don't know, always stuck with me. All right, let's get dangerously low over the water. Everybody behind me is like, what is this guy doing? He's a maniac. Except for me, dude, 666 there. He's having no difficulties there. Now, what you find very interesting is that our altitude of the lake is not zero. And, uh, like, we are very much up. You know, I think of the uh, poor, you know, Piper Warrior or something like that, trying to, uh, having to set its mixture correctly before takeoff in this region. Um, Scania 770S. Um, believe it or not, I literally was just talking about the PMDG uh, 737. But when it comes to PMDG, I've flown that one quite a bit, and I also have done the DC-6. See, we got the new Kodiak 900 in real life. Oh, that's neat. There's actually a person who owns a Kodiak at the local airport that I fly in and out of all the time. And it's just an interesting airplane, but uh, hang on just a moment. Uh, one of the interesting things about that particular plane that were, um, was watching him try to land it. You know, this one guy is like a camouflage kind of a Kodiak. Oh, it was a really, really neat plane. Kind of reminds me of a 208. But um, we were actually watching him do pattern work for whatever reason, a local kind of, I call it like a beater airport because everybody goes there to beat the tarmac. But um, he was bouncing it. And it was one of those things where like, oh, professional type rate pilot, everything under the sun. Conditions are pretty typical. Boing, boing, boing down the runway. It was like, okay, I don't feel so bad about half my landings now. You know, when the pros do it, you, you don't feel bad. At this point, I do not consider myself a pro in the real world. Not indeed. There we go. Let's enjoy the low water here. Now, keep in mind, in the real world, we'd be out dealing with quite a few birds. We'd also be dealing with, you know, folks in their canoes, basically probably diving for cover as we come ripping along here. But hey, like I said, you got to make things interesting once in a while. Now, what will really fascinate you is you can actually put altitude hold on right now, and it will keep this altitude, despite the fact that we're not terribly high above the water here. Oh, boy. Kind of zip. Ah. Yeah, another one. You want to speak about expensive planes? Uh, one of the guys at our local airport also uh, flies a Cirrus 22, and uh, he has his own special, you know, code name and everything like that that he probably paid extra for and everything. But the best part is the guy has no hair. You know, he clearly shaves it, so everybody at the airport calls him Jeff Bezos, and it's it's not really Jeff Bezos, but um, he kind of has that sort of personality where he just takes off and immediately turns to the direction he needs to go. You know, the rest of us, you know, we take off, we climb to 900 feet, we request permission to turn, you know, we gently turn. This guy's like, nope, gotta go. And he just sort of yolos right through the middle of the city that we're nearby. You're gonna get your CFI, do you think? Uh, how about them, boys? Uh, that's a long way from now. Oh. The reason I look into my CFI is because I wouldn't mind the sign hustle of doing the CFI thing. And like I said, I'm a teacher professionally, so it's kind of a neat thing to just, you know, might as well be a flying teacher professionally. But like I said, that's that's quite a ways out. You know, that's after commercial, that's after IFR, that's after everything else. Give myself a couple whacks of trim here. Perfect. There's a strange reflection that's killing me just a teeny tiny bit there. There we go. Would I want to go all the way to airline? No, I'm a little too far into my regular career to uh, consider a major career switch. It's not to say I wouldn't if I had to, it's just to say I wouldn't be in a rush to do so also. You know, I enjoy flying, and I enjoy the way that I am flying now, and like I said, I'll tell you about that in a moment as well, once we get over this uh, lake and I don't have to concentrate so hard. <laughs> it's like this weird little shadow, kind of tracing with my mouse here. I don't know, it's kind of weird, kind of weird. I'm sure the people behind me are lower than I am. Nah, they, they stayed about the same. Okay. I mean, I could probably get lower. I just don't know. Nah, nah, we'll, we'll try. We'll try. I'd have to, hate to have to restart everything because I smacked into the water. All right. That's about mm, six or seven feet off the water. I don't think I want to get any closer than that without floats. This is how you get in under the radar. Just to surprise air traffic control. It's great technique. Great technique. All right, I'm going to get about 20, 30 feet up here. That's a little better. Delightful. Now, speaking of... Oh, fair enough. Wasn't sure. Oh, excellent. Um, private pilot is awesome. Um, the one thing, I mean, 
I have this uh, nice editorial that I'm mentally putting together here, talking about my experiences getting a private pilot license and then enacting it. It's, uh, it's, it's been interesting. It is probably worthwhile creating a couple videos for it. Uh, one of the things that surprised me was the um, bureaucracy. <laughs> it's one of those things where obviously, you know, pilots crash airplanes, you know, they die, there's investigations. You know, the entire basically federal aviation rules is around, you know, it's written in blood. Is it, these aren't rules that somebody just walked down the street. You know, we should probably have a rule that dictates this, this, this. It's just not true. You know, every time a new rule shows up, it's because somebody done goofed. Or they were doing something in such a way that wasn't safe, and they said, you know, we should probably quantify that so that people don't consider it. You know, you think about why was this visibility like this? Well, because when you do the research, if you have visibility less than X, Y, Z, this happens. You know, why is it that you have to have this many days doing such and such? It's because this happens. You know, all these kind of things. And it's it, looking at it as a whole, especially in my whole, I just want to fly the plane perspective. It, it tweaks things a bit. It makes me respect, you know, the good folks over in Flight Sim Land as well. <laughs> I said... Sound like Ben Shapiro. I'd have to see. I'd have to listen to Ben Shapiro to know exactly what that's like. But I wouldn't be surprised. Like I said, I got I got some comments just on the training process and uh, some of my experiences as a private pilot. Now that I am a, <laughs> this is what I do now. But it's it, it's been interesting, and I'm sure it's different depending on what country you go into. And like I said, I don't want to give it any away. That sounds like a pretty fun premiere video. All right, let's see how we're doing. So we're coming up on about the halfway point of this gigantic lake here. Like I said, uh, this particular one here. This is Lago Niasa, which is uh, pretty slick. Then we're going to hit the coast. We're going to pick up a little bit of altitude, and then we're going to kind of rip through this mountain pass that's going to be sitting there on the other side. There we go. I'm glad we picked this plane and not like, you know, the P-51 from last time. That thing's a project to land. This thing you can just smack into the ground and, eh, close enough. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm not making fun of the man. At the end of the day, you don't want to be a statistic. And now one of the interesting things, um, every time I fly a plane, because like I've done everything pilot in command recently, um, a lot, every flight I do, I look back and go, what could have gone wrong? You know, it's, you know, in a flight sim, you just go, you save your game, you exit, whatever, you don't have to worry, oh, I crash, who cares? But in the real world, you sit there and go, oh, man, I really wish I had set that trim differently. Or, you know, I should have taken a couple more minutes to make sure that was running smoothly before going anywhere. That could have been problematic. Or, you know, I really should have gotten that close to that cloud. You know, all these little tiny things that, you know, in a flight sim, you just, just go. But, like, that's a big difference between the real world when you could crash and die and kill people, potentially yourself and plus your passengers. But in the sim, it's like, whatever. And, like, that mentality, like I said, that's another thing that probably needs a discussion. I'll probably put together a video on that, just describing, you know, the translation between the sim and the real world kind of a thing. And speaking of the real world kind of a thing, I got a unique opportunity yesterday to uh, do a little bit of uh, passenger carrying. You know, I fly with the wife all the time, kind of a thing like that. But I usually don't, you know, carry other people who are non, you know, familiar with flying, so to speak. But I had the opportunity to actually carry basically an entire plane of people. And they were just like, oh, we're just looking for transportation, essentially. So um, what we actually had done is we'd flown up to uh, Portland, Maine, which was, um, you know, originally we were going to go deeper into the um, state, but we couldn't find a rental car, as silly as that sounds. Things that you don't have to worry about in the flight sim. And um, the incredible thing is I'd never flown into an international airport and landed before and stayed. You know, I've landed, flown into international airports before because, you know, ILS and stuff like that. But it was the weirdest experience in the world when you land and like, hey, where are you parking? It's like, uh, the FBO, I guess. And then they, you know, direct you and then there's a marshal. Like, I've been marshaled like twice. You now, one time was my flight instructor being nice. The second time was this, you know, basically 18-year-old kid with a couple of orange sticks. And he's uh, symbol signaling me and all these different things. And I'm sitting there going... Um, I forget what all those mean because I never do this kind of a thing. Like, obviously, if you play Flight Sim, you probably had the little marshal guy do things for you, but you've not experienced everything that leads up to the marshalling itself. And plus the proceed down this row. Okay, no, go down a row. Okay, what symbol is it to keep going down a row? You know, how does you know he has your um, point of view and all these other kind of things? And then, of course, when you finally stop and he points at your engine and does a little a slice through his neck kind of a thing, you're like, uh, oh, what, is that the one where I'm supposed to shut the uh, cut off? Okay, cut off. Got it. So, you know, of course, you blitz through the engine shutdown checklist kind of a thing like that. And you're like, I probably missed six things. So you have to go back over it again and make sure you hit everything. And then they run up and chalk your plane. And then it's like, oh, would you like us to go ahead and um, you know, move this plane and stuff like that? And then the most wild thing is, you know, the van comes up for, to our airplane and we 
just get in this like really nice Mercedes van and we're just like, you know, like a normal family kind of a thing. And they drive us up to the FBO. We go through the gate and you you sign the little paper. Yeah, I need 15 gallons so I can get home. And then they're like, oh, is it okay if we tow your plane? It's like, yeah, if you need to tow my plane, it's fine. The parking brake's not set. So, of course, I'm thinking, oh, they're not going to put the plane far. They're going to leave my plane alone. Of course, when I came back that night, the plane had moved three rows down, and they had to go get the van to get us over to it because it was such a big airport, and there were so many different rows of planes and jets. Of course, I'm sitting there in the little hee-hee sky lane, and everybody else there is, um, you know, corporate jet this, Bonanza this, turboprop this. There was a PC-12 there, which you see in the simulator. It's like, oh, it's a PC-12. In the real world, that's a really big plane. Like, you don't realize how big that plane is until you stand next to it and go, oh, that's why it's not fast. And everybody thinks about the TBM 930, and it's like, whatever. But like I said, that was an incredible experience for me. And, uh, the other incredible half of that experience, of course, is when we go to take off, you know, we get our flight following back out, which was great because they, they kept bouncing us around different altitudes so we didn't run into, you know, airliners, <laughs> which is always fun. But on the way home, of course, you know, I looked at the weather a million times. And in the flight sim, oh, the weather's bad. Whatever, the plane will deal. In the real world, it's like, I could crash. You know, I know what I'm doing. And I'm capable and competent and certified. But you're still like, I don't want to risk it if I don't have to. So, of course, in that particular case, you know, I was, you know, the winds were supposed to be X, Y, Z, out or whatever. I'm like, oh, that's no problem. Fly an hour and a half back home. And uh, what do I find out? But the winds are like... 12 knots gusting 17, 100% crosswind. And like, you know, I've done that flight simulator so many times, I like don't even want to, it just, it's automatic in the flight sim. But in the real plane, you're like, oh, I've got passengers in the back seat that probably don't want to see an airplane flying sideways. So <laughs> it was a very, very interesting um, approach. Like obviously we had to come in kind of sideways and I kind of like faked the crab approach a little bit where I just kind of like, you know, didn't quite skid the plane until the last minute and ended up putting the plane on the ground like, Textbook is the best way to describe it. I still I thought it was the best landing I've done all week, really, honestly. But, you know, you finally settle down to the ground, and, like, you don't want to sigh because your passengers are going to look at you like, that was risky, and you're like, no, it was normal. Leave me alone. I'm a good pilot. Shut up. You know, kind of one of those sort of things. It's just, it's wild. Uh, let's see here. Uh, a couple things coming from the chat here. Uh, PC-12 is a dream airplane. It's a nice plane. It's like a bus with a turboprop on the front. It's pretty cool. I like the TBM much, much more, but the PC-12 is pretty cool. Um, Simworks is making a PC-12. Probably, I think, the people over at Carinado is making one, too. Um, yeah. Uh, actually, I don't, I don't hate Carinado. I need a lot of people are like kind of knock them on their quality. They're not bad. Like their planes are usually absolutely beautiful and they're kind of missing a couple of features. But in general, they're really, in my experiences at least, they're not that bad of airplanes. Uh, the one that I've been beating up the most, obviously, they have a 182 because I've been flying the real world. The 182s like crazy, but um, it, it's it's faithful. It's faithful. All right, story time is over. Uh, we have cleared the lake, and now we're uh, getting back to our actual uh, regularly scheduled programming here. So now we're heading the west coast of this lake here. Uh, like I said, we're still cruising over this uh, particular country. Uh, Salim is going to be this major, major city. I don't know. I want to call it a city. It's a major, major lodging kind of establishment, which is going to be just to the west. And now we're going to be seeing some serious savannah. You know, kind of cruising over. I love my shadow right there, by the way. Solid. You can pick what time it is. So taking a look here, um, like obviously, like, this is incredible. Like, it's just little trees, and, like, I can't feel the humidity and heat because we're, you know, 2,100 feet up here. But you can just tell just how warm it gets just by the color everything that you see is. And you've got these dusty roads. you got to imagine somebody in some 4x4 four four just kind of cruising along, and a big pile of dust just coming directly out behind them as they're just kind of bouncing around this road here. You know, a couple of people kind of passing the other way and some, you know, older cars kind of a thing. You know, people, you know, on the side of the road, you know, with their animals. Just like, it's just incredible, incredible sight. And one thing that I'm always super fascinated with with the savannah is the way the trees get distributed. You know, where I live, you know, you have pine forests and they're like green and it's just thick. The only thing that's not thick about them would be like where you'd have a river or a town or something like that or a road. But in the savannah, everything comes in little splotches. And I think that's like the most incredible little thing because, you know, you're cruising around, you know, you go to one splotch, you go to the next splotch, next splotch. And you got to imagine all these different animals, you know, coming down like this river, for example, to, you know, have some water, you know, the late evening when the sun starts to go down and just all those little pieces and like you know, just people hanging out and you've got these isolated villages. Obviously, the nearest airport is the one we're flying to. 
but you can imagine just how quiet it is. You know, you're flying, you don't have, maybe every once in a while, maybe you get a contrail of somebody flying down to South Africa or something like that. But absolute just silence, except for, you know, the sounds of nature, the sound of, like I said, somebody kind of driving up on an old uh, rickety bus that backfires or something like that every once in a while, kind of along this road. And, you know, you disappear over here where there's just, I don't know. And just looking up and just seeing emptiness. You know, where I fly, there's always contrails. You know, I just happen to live in a pretty busy part of our country. So you see a lot of stuff kind of coming and going. But here, it would just be just quiet. And like, I don't know. It's just such an amazing concept to me. I should probably slow down. Everybody's uh, kind of getting away from me here. But that's okay. Oh, uh, let's see here. Um, some works, yes. I really dig the 182, but on the ground handles like a toy. So... <laughs> So for those of you who've never actually flown a real while of Cessna 182, uh, the two pedals you use for the purposes of rock working your rider and working your nose wheel uh, feel like um, rubber bands. Like if you take a rubber band between uh, you know your thumb and your forefinger right now and you just go boing, oing, 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 like that, feel that sensation, that's what the rudder pedals feel like with a Cessna 182 on the ground. You know, like I have rudder pedals in, um, you know, for my normal sim setup here and like, you know, they're, they're they're great pedals, but they're, you know, pretty, pretty weak. And they kind of give you a little bit of that rubber band feel, but nothing compares to that ring, ring, ring that you'd actually feel in the actual 182 pedals. So now if I wanted to make the 182 take a really aggressive turn, um, I'd have to stomp on the pedal and press the brake at the same time. And even then it would only kind of half catch, but the whole flipping itself over like you get inside the sim is actually very realistic. The plane tips deadly so well, when you do put any sort of side load on it without having come to a complete stop first. Uh, that's just a real 182 thing. It's actually fairly realistic. Is it as easy as the sim? No. The sim, you, when you push that pedal forward, you basically are squeezing that rubber band and it, it doesn't catch right away. You have a little bit of warning. This one in the sim is much, much more tight. One thing that the sim does do well, the 182 I'm saying from Carinado, is it captures the last couple seconds of your landing. Uh, one of the problems with the um, 182 that I've struggled with in the real world is the fact the plane likes to stop flying. Uh, you know, coming from archers and you know 172s and you know uh, 150s and stuff like that. When you pull the throttle back to come in for a landing, you just kind of coast it down to the ground and just boop, you're good. The 182, if you pull the throttle back, everything is completely normal for the first five seconds. You know, the plane just sort of floats a little bit. It's fine. You start pulling that nose up to flare, and then the plane just stops flying. It's like, okay, I'm good, and just bang, and uh, you're down on your two tires. Or if you weren't paying attention, you're down on all three tires, which is you don't want to do a three-point landing on a Cessna 182. That's not good for the front wheel. <laughs> you're going to bend your fire wheel, or fire uh, wall, rather. Uh, it's not good. But trying to learn how to find how hard you have to pull that nose up, plus the extra for the uh, nose attitude of the plane, that, believe it or not, the people at Carinado did a pretty good job capturing that. You know, if you come in with no power and you hold the nose up and you're a little high, the plane just stops flying and you end up pulling back really, really hard and then you put like 10, 11 degrees and you almost smack the tail. That's completely realistic. That's what the plane does. Now, the interesting thing with the 182 is if you're heavy and you have your center of gravity back, the plane is a totally different aircraft. It's much more normal. You pull the throttle back, it just starts sinking gently, lift the nose up to that, you know, five, six degrees. On the ground, you're all good. Like I said, it's it's quite a piece, especially if you come from actually getting that pretty accurate. Just enjoying the scenery for a second here. So much of my flying now consists of not running into other people. <laughs> I know that sounds whatever, but honestly, it, I feel my job as a pilot is about taking off, landing, and not crashing into other planes. Like, that's what it's become, you know, at least where I fly. I love these rivers. Like, imagine taking, like, a canoe down this or something like that, and just the silence. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. And I will say, uh, one thing Carinado does not do well is they tend to have a little couple... Uh, again, this is speaking from experience. Uh, they tend to have bugs... Like, especially with the sound, you know, if air traffic control calls you, it'll, like, cut your engine out. It's like, well, that sucks. I'm sure it's something on my end, but it's just something I've always noticed. Not bad, though. Now, one thing that I've got to experience lately is actually a Mooney, an M20, which, like, I make the comment a couple times, as you've probably seen from my recent videos, and that it's a small plane. It, 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 it's a really small plane. But uh, they also do a pretty decent job of capturing that ridiculous amount of float that plane has uh, when you come in for a landing. Now, what I really wish is uh, somebody would make an Archer 3, because uh, that's the other plane I get to fly all the time now. And that thing is... That, that's, that's a nice plane. It is not fast. Like, not fast. Even like, like even in a dive, it's not a fast plane. 
But what I really respect about it is everything's, it just goes. Like, it's, it's well harmonized. It's a really quiet plane in the interior. Things like in the flight sim, it's like, I can just turn my volume down. In the real world, it, airplanes can get kind of loud. Especially uh, the 182 is, whew, uh, three-bladed propeller with uh, that much horsepower. Yeah, that gets a little loud, especially because you're sitting on the exhaust. And the other fun thing with the 182 is when you start getting real close to the yellow line, it gets extra loud, uh, which is just, again, the sim does an okay job of that, but it doesn't quite capture it quite as well. All right, let's see here. Good to hear. I've been eyeing the 120. Have I flown the Kodiak by um, AB Photos? I actually have a video on the Mooney 20 coming out. I think it's the end of this upcoming week. So if you want to wait, you can see kind of what I have to say about it and kind of walk you through it. I like it because it's fast. And in VR, it's just like, it's just a go plane. I really enjoy, I, I like that about it. And um, I wish it was just a touch faster, but it's more than an amazing step up from everything else. You've probably been flying this GA. Um, how about some boys is talking about the Kodiak. I am not the biggest, I, I, I don't have it. I can't speak to it. Um, my turbo props, and I mean, here I am flying a turbo prop right here. Um, what's the best way to say it? Uh, the 208 form factor, you know, the big turbo prop in the front with the bus in the back. Uh, that's not, I don't know. I'm just not as excited about it as uh, some folks are. Um, I've kept an eye on that one because apparently they did a really, really, really nice job with the mechanics of that particular aircraft, which I think is awesome. You know, I love stuff like that. Oh, we pick up a Romulus and a Kit Fox. Good choice, man. Good choice. Kit Fox, by the way, I flew an X-Plane. It's awesome. Um, so, unfortunately, I can't speak to its quality or anything along those lines. I assume it's good. Uh, usually, those guys do a really, really nice job. Sim works. Um, I've got their... St Actually, no, I have Sim Skunk works. That might be different. Um, my understanding is they did a nice job. But, like I said, I can't speak to it because I've not flown it myself. Uh, the 208, I can say I don't fly it very often. It's... Amazing plane. Uh, one of the uh, instructors that I've actually had recently work with me on the, all the new planes I have to get checked out for. Uh, he's got more hours in a Cessna 208 than I care to even joke about. You know, people are like, oh, I retired with 10,000 hours. He's like, yeah, I got 10,000 hours starting. <laughs> like, it's, he's unbelievably qualified. It's, it's amazing. And his perception of energy with an airplane is so different than, like, I'm, I'm barely starting to understand the concepts that he's just, it's casual understanding to him. And it's, like I said, he's a really, really cool guy. And like I said, I love working with him because just so many insights. His favorite thing in the universe to do is uh, he'd look out the window like this and say, um, yeah, see that right there? Uh, you have an engine now. Can you land on it? And I'd be, you say something different. I'd say like, um, sure. And then he'd shut the engine off and say, okay. And then you'd have to land it. And then like you'd take off like 10 seconds after takeoff. He's like, oh, do you think you could get back to the runway? I'm like, yeah, sure. And he's like, okay, engine dies. And then we have to get back to the runway. You know, you could be in the middle of a stall and he'd be like, all right, let's make it interesting. Uh, I'm going to push the right rudder all the way forward. And then the plane goes, one of these things. You're like, oh God, don't do this to me. Or, you know, let's do a turn around a point. Oh, that's not bad. Okay, let's do a turn around the point, but you can't use your attitude indicator. It's like, I can probably make that work. All right, let's do a turn around the point, but um, you can't look at the front windshield. And it's like, oh, oh, um, I don't know what, oh, oh uh, um, it completely, it just blows your mind. You know, everything that you've done in practice and you're like, yeah, I can do that. That's routine. It could, it just, it upsets you. You know, you're not ready for things like that. You know, flying along and saying, oh, do you know XYZ airport? Oh yeah, I know that. That's an XY. Yeah. That, I understand that's a pretty short runway. He's like, yeah, that's the shortest runway in Connecticut. You want to land at it? I'm like, I'm not going to say no. So of course he takes us to the shortest runway in uh, Connecticut, which by the way is Ellington in case uh, you want to kind of do one of those sort of things. And um, it is a short runway. And again, I was, I had about an hour and a half in the Cessna 182. And he's like, yeah, let's land on the shortest field there is. And he's like, if we don't hit the third center marker, um, let's go around because there's no place to go. So um, I landed it on the first center line marker because I wasn't going to take any chances. And um, yeah, that was quite a junk kind of a thing like that of a landing. And uh, that was, that was wild. That was, like I said. Then he's like, hey, you know XYZ Airport? I'm like, yeah, that was pretty cool. We almost got killed, by the way, because uh, we took off and somebody in the float plane took off parallel to us and almost ran us down. <laughs> Actually, what he does, uh, how about them boys, is um, he does. He has a little piece of black cardboard. So he'll just, like, knock something out. He'll be like, oh, 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 oh this is uh, no longer working. Your altimeter no longer works. Or, like, oh, now what would happen if this happened? Let's say this got stuck open. What would you do? Would you be able to take off with 30 notches of flaps? Okay, what happens if you put your flaps out like this? Like I say, like, spectacular. Like, you can tell he's just flown too long. You know, he's definitely, he's been at it. That, that's been his career. He never did airlines, by the way. He always did little stuff. And it's just, it's incredible. Like I said, absolutely incredible. And I look forward to learning more. We got some uh, Mooney time coming up, and I'm really looking forward to it because I, 
I am not complex certified in the real world. In the simulator, like I grab the landing gear handle every single time I do anything, but in the real world, landing gear that retracts is gonna be a different experience. All right, let's continue our cruise. We're actually getting relatively close to our destination here. We're going to Kamuzu International Airport here. It's a Fuiki. Um, I don't think we can see it from, oh my God, I just wanna clean my windshield. Let me clean, let me clean, let me clean. So uh, we're basically going to come into this one. Now, this one we're going to be at a really awkward angle for. Uh, the wind today is coming mostly out of the west for me. I don't know what it's coming out for you. So we're going to end up in a weird situation where we're going to have to cross midfield and pop into a left downwind for runway 32. Like I said, pretty relaxing, pretty relaxing. Another thing I've got to discover since I'm flying a lot more in the real world, like I said, I'm going to end up at two channels. Real world flying, simulated flying, I swear. Is, uh, you know, just how weather is just so dynamic. You know, I can look at the weather forecast and be like, cool. But what you don't get is, let's say I'm flying up here near this cloud. I'm just kind of cruising around here. If I get within a mile of this cloud, your altitude suddenly jumps up, you know, 100 feet. And it's not because the airplane went up 100 feet, although it could. It's because the pressure differential created by the cloud caused your altimeter to indicate a different altitude. So even though you haven't changed altitude, your altimeter now says you're 100 feet higher than you were a second ago, or 100 feet lower, depending. And then when you get near the cloud, all of a sudden, your plane will tilt to the right all of a sudden, and your plane does one of these things, and you're like, whoa, whoa, what's this? What's this? And then you get away from the cloud, and everything's back to normal again. You know, you're cruising around, and you have a couple things above you that are really tall clouds, and you get underneath them, and they pull you up. You know, you're cruising around, and you look down, and all of a sudden, you're 100 feet higher, and you're like, what the heck? There's nothing around me to do 100 feet higher. But then you look over at your, alt you know, your temperature gauge, and all of a sudden, your temperature gauge shows that it's three or four degrees cooler. And uh, that's when you remember back on that stupid test you had to study for, that's like, oh, yeah, temperature affects altimeters. But you don't get that in the sim well. You know, you get a little bit of it. And then the other thing is, you know, it's turbulence. You know, if I was at low altitude like this in the real world, especially this time of day, this plane would not be smooth. You know, I'd be getting bounced the entire time. Uh, one of the things that you do in the sim is you look down here at an instrument like this, and you're like, oh, I'm going to change the altimeter setting. Ta-da! In the real world, you can't see this because the plane is bouncing too much evenly to be able to take this knob and put it at the number you want to. You know, I've got perfect vision. But when the plane's going, you know, bouncy, bouncy like this with your head, you just can't hold steady enough, long enough to accurately set these numbers. Like, it's just, you, in the flights, I'm looking at this. I'm getting a little bit of that bump from that ridge below me, but it's just, it, that, that, it just doesn't do anything. Like, that's just not what it's like. I don't know. It's just little, little things that I'm starting to pick up. Little, little things like that. All right. Let's see here. Our airport is, I think... I think it's actually right over 12 o'clock here. Let me see if I can get us a little bit of information here. So this is uh, 4,022 feet. Its length is 11,617 feet. That puts our pattern altitude at about 5,000 feet. So I'm gonna start migrating down. Oh, that's another thing I learned in the real world too, that uh, flight simulator descents are uh, not the same thing as real world descents. You know, the real world, um, obviously we're about, you know, 10, 15, uh, actually, let me tell you exactly how far out we are. We are two, min two and a half minutes out. That's not that far. We're about seven nautical miles out. Um, air traffic control would have already told me to make right traffic for tree two. Or it would have told me, you know, cross midfield, uh, left field, uh, left downwind for tree two or something like that. That information would have been communicated to me back when I was crossing that mountain a few minutes ago. So, you know, as you're starting to descend, you're like, all right, I need to lose a thousand feet. That's not going to take very long. But the problem is, look at this. I'm doing 144 knots. It takes two minutes and 30 seconds to get where I need to go. So how fast do I need to lose 1,000 feet? You know, at 500 feet per minute, that's going to put me at about 5,500. But remember, when I stick the nose down, like I just did right now, we're actually going to be picking up speed here. So I'm actually going to pull the throttle back so I don't completely redline it. There we go. Nice. Of course, it's a turboprop. So right now, I'm losing 1,000 feet per minute. That's way more than my passenger's ears are going to tolerate. So instead, you're like, oh, I'll do 500 feet per minute. So you trim it out for 500 feet per minute, get it all ready. And then you notice your speed starts to drop. Or if it's in a carbureted airplane, you're freaking out about the carburetor temperature when you look over at the needle. <laughs> it's just things you don't get in the sim. It's just little, little stuff like that. There we go. 500 feet per minute. Close enough. Oh, and trimming the real world is amazing. Trimming the sim is garbage. Trim in the world world, you just hold the stick for a second, you push the trim, and then you don't have to hold the stick anymore. You don't have to fly the plane with the trim, you don't have to do anything. There is our runway, by the way. As you can see, it is, uh, it's big. It's really, 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 really big. It should be pretty easy to land on. It's Kamuzu Airport. Basically heading over the capital now. 
I think it's a cool looking skin. Love these little just green zones surrounded by the brown zones. It's just such a different color palette here. Where I am, it's green, and it's green, and it's green, except when it's winter, when it's gray. All right, we got about 500 feet to go, and oh my gosh, that runway is so large, it's intimidating. Man, this thing slows down nice. I forget this is a turboprop. This is a regular carbureted, you know, piston engine. You couldn't just pull the throttle back like that. You'd do all sorts of nastiness to the uh, engine. You'd be very, 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 very cautious about letting it cool down too quickly. Turbo props, they don't care. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want. All right, 300 feet to go, and we'll pop into the left down one for tree two. And as always, if you'd like to join me for the picture, I'm going to be right there where that car is crossing. Please don't do that with passengers, by the way. They tend to scream in your ear. They also tend to throw up. That sucks. All righty then. Good so far. That's about 5,000 feet right there. Lead off a little bit of speed. And let's go ahead and pop ourselves into our left downwind. All right. For the record, I like traffic pattern landings much better than straight in landings. Something about a straight in landing taking like five minutes to actually get on the ground from your initial approach, it just, it messes with my head, I swear. Look at the big squishy wheel. I love that. There we go. Looks pretty good. I don't think I'm getting too close to it. All right. Landing gear down. Checked. Flap speed looks good. And yeah, we'll just start making our way out. One of the things I love about the G1000, you can see exactly when you're 45 degrees to the end of the runway. <laughs> I wish I had that luxury in the real planes. Although one of the planes I get to fly has an Aspen in it. Of course, so what they don't tell you is in the real world, Aspen's just cut out. They're not supposed to cut out, but anything interferes with the pedo tube, they cut out. Ooh, we're high. That nose starts slowly wandering. I really don't need to use this little runway, though. <laughs> As it stands right now, I'm going to land within like the first 50 feet. Don't want to do that. I actually want to float. Yeah, trim in a sim is never correct. It's either too fast, it's too slow, or it just doesn't behave like it does in the real world. In the real world, it just reduces pressure on the controls. That's it. I mean, in the real world, I don't have to move the controller very far to do 90% of what I want to do. The only time I really have to jerk the control is when you're coming in for landing and you have to flare. Alrighty, let's try to make this a nice and long landing here. I have a buddy that one of his favorite things to do with uh, landings is uh, land right next to the taxiway he needs to use so that when they call him and say, oh, what? Oh, I see what you did there. You know, one of those kind of a things. I always thought that was kind of amusing. There we go. Nice. That got us pretty close to the taxiway we need to use. Not quite on top, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Whee! The most PC sixes in this part of the world, I think, you, Microsoft Flight Simulator has ever seen. I always like to watch other people's landings. It's always fun. All right, see how we go. Go ahead, go Tash. Have a go. Oh, one landing. All right, you got two out of that one, go Tash. Nice job. Nice job. All right, me dude, six six six. Let's take a look. Don't worry, I've done that a lot of times in this plane. Let me see what I do with the real plane. Hey, no cutting people off. That's rude. Romulus. All right, Gamer Sensei. Oh, no, it looks like Romulus is up. No, Romulus, I'm telling you right now, you're going too fast. If your nose is down that far. All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Oh, easy, easy. Getting a little sinky. A little sinky. Gamer Sensei 88, I like it. Yeah, there it is. That's the flow. Whoa, careful. You got it, Gamer 88. There it is, right there. Three point. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, that's one landing. Nice. Whoa. Boing. That's two. Two landings. Good job, Gamer88. Me66. Oh, I think you ran out of energy at the last second there. Awesome. All right, let's go head over to the terminal and get a quick picture. Yep, yeah, absolutely. So we'll go take our little picture and we'll go crash the plane like we always do. Yeah. This is uh, like Spike Jones vision here. I think I zoomed in too far. Whoa. Got to zoom out. Does it make me sick? Looks like a good spot, Gotash. I like that spot. And perfect. Dunk. All right, let's go ahead and get everybody over here. And I'll go ahead and I'll get some nice dramatic sun while we're at it. We'll do some uh, photography work here. Oh, yeah, there it is. Look at how early uh, nighttime is. It's crazy. Unfortunately, I have to find a body of water to smack this airplane into, and I might have to go into the river or something like that. Oh, we got another person landing. Easy. Boing. Oh, no, no, no. That was just one. Eh, one and a half. One and a half. One and a half. All right, let's grab our picture real quick. Oh, that looks amazing. Awesome. All right, so as always, at the end of these, I like to always kind of set up some Q&A. If anybody has any questions or anything like that, this would be a great time. Or maybe there's a video or something that you'd like to do or uh, kind of uh, see on the channel or something along those lines. Always looking for ideas. Uh, for now, I'm just going to mangle this poor plane. I mean, it was such a nice plane. It got me here so neatly. I just I feel bad, like, being mean to it. But, uh, you know, I, I want to ruin my statistics in Microsoft Flight Simulator here. just need to find something to smack into. So as always, anybody have any questions or concerns or you'd like to see a specific type of video or maybe something a little bit different, we have some stuff on the F-35 coming out, which I know is going to be a future video because that thing is a, thing is a UFO. It's super cool. Oh my God, there's got to be something I can smack my thing into here. I feel bad about people's like fields and stuff because it's like, oops, sorry about that. Uh, thank you very much, AV Photos. Like I say, you keep it going. Uh, let's see here. I guess we could find a tree. Nah, trees catch fire. I don't want to crash into that. It's a pretty good, like, there's like a pothole right there. I guess we, it almost looks like craters. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Deep stall. Deep stall. Deep stall. Oh, yeah. Deep stall. Like 33 knots. Oh, boy. That's the spin. Nope. You not? Wow. This thing does not want to stall. I am so impressed. Wow. Okay, I was I was really expecting this thing to sort of fall out of the sky, but it, it just didn't do it. It just kept going. All right here. Um, that looks pretty good. Let's do a three hundred point landing. Uh, pfft. let's see here. Uh, you said you prefer the TBM that's built into the potential PC twelve. Yes. Um, the reason I would say that is on account of the fact it's just it's quicker and it's smaller. The PC-12 is a big plane. I like stuff that's a little bit more convenient and easy to operate, but the PC-12, uh, mechanically, I think there's a lot of really cool things about it. Like I said, we got to see when it actually comes out. But other 